today's task, we're going to add a creeper gear to a Cub Lowboy 154. Now this is an early model Cub Lowboy. There were some differences between the drive shaft lengths in the later model and the early models. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but basically we want to strip this thing down so we can add that creeper gear. And I want to show you all the parts and pieces required to add the creeper gear. For this procedure, the difference between a early model and a late model is going to be the length of the drive shaft. Uh, this model, being an early model, has the pulleys kind of pulled back away from the engine a little bit. And uh, it kind of makes it a pain in the rear end to service the clutch, which is why I believe they re-engineered it a little bit. With this configuration, you have to unbolt the engine and scoot the engine forward a few inches to get the shaft loose back here to work onto the clutch. Or you could also unbolt the rear end and scoot the rear end away. Both ways work and both ways are kind of a pain. Uh, the later models, you could actually shove the drive shaft kind of inside this way a little bit, which would give you just enough room to service the clutch. Uh, that being said, the only thing you have to be concerned about is do you have an early model, late model, and the length of the drive shaft that you're going to need to have to add the creeper gear. Now what I'm showing you here is the differences in those drive shafts. The top drive shaft is from a late model with a creeper gear and the bottom drive shaft is for an early model with a creeper gear. So you can see the early tractors require a little bit longer drive shaft. Now this is the creeper gear and as you can see there's really not a whole lot going on. It's pretty simple. It bolts on, uh, four bolts, holds it on, there's a gasket inside and a, a linking gear that goes in between. We'll talk about that in a second as well. But not much to it. It's just a matter of getting to the point where you can bolt it on uh, that kind of makes it a pain in the rear end on these tractors. But it's not terrible. It's just going to take you a good day or so if you're not experienced with the tractors. Now the first steps is uh, pretty much just dismantling everything. We're going to disconnect the battery, pull the seat cover off, get the fenders off. Uh, we'll take the three point uh, part as much as we can and get all those parts aside. And then we'll talk about what you need to do to actually pull the rear end back to be able to add the creeper gear. Now that we have the seat off, the seat cover, and the parts and pieces to most of the three points, we can talk a little bit about what really happens when you add a creeper gear to a tractor like this. Now the creeper gear is, you know, kind of big and bulky, and basically when you bolt it to the rear end, you have to move the clutch package forward the distance or the thickness of that creeper gear. So this cross member gets unbolted from here and rebolted to here, but that also means the linkage down below needs replaced as well. So if you're getting this off of a parts tractor, you're going to want to grab a couple of things. You're going to grab the, the shorter linkage and also you want to grab this fork because this fork has a little bit of a different foot design to kind of help with the reach up here. Now if you're a fabricator, this is probably not a really big deal. You could build your own parts. Uh, but again, if you're taking it off a parts tractor, try to get those parts. All right, now onto the fun part, and that's removing the rear end from the tractor. Uh, we need to remove a couple of things before we actually do that. The first thing is we need to take care of the brake linkages. They've just got some pins you can pull and drop them. If you were too lazy to remove the motor deck like me, you can pull those pins and drop the deck arms. That'll get those out of the way. Uh, you need to remove the oil lines, the big one and the little one. Get those out of the way so they don't drag anything. You need to take this little linkage out here, pull that bolt out of there. That way that's free. And now you have to deal with the PTO clutch and shaft. What I like to do here is just unbolt these three bolts and then just lift it straight up and, and kind of let it hang there to get it out of the way. There's a lot of play once you do that quite a bit. Uh, that'll take care of all of that. And then you have to get to the bolts that are holding the rear end on. So that is the bolts on this side. The bolts on this side. And then there's two more bolts that you can't see. Uh, they're going through a cross member that runs right underneath this frame rail, right about there. And two bolts hold the bottom of the rear end. Now with all those bolts out and the linkage is disconnected, you can literally just kind of roll it away. Now I do have the floor jack with wheels holding up the back of the rear end, which makes it really easy to move this around. And I also have a jack stand uh, on the cross member running across the frame rails holding the frame up. Uh, and it just makes it so much easier to work with it like this. You just roll it away and then we'll install the creeper gear and then we'll kind of change the configuration here a little bit, put it all back together and we'll have a creeper gear installed. 
Now you remove the drive clutch. It's just held on by a bolt that goes through the shaft right there. Pull that bolt out. You might need to knock it off. I used a rubber mallet, a little bit of penetrating fluid, and it came right off. The uh, clutch brake over here is just held on by two bolts. It's actually bolted right here and here. And once you get all of that removed, you need to clean this up really well because this is actually going to be bathed in new oil when you put your um, drive gear on, your creeper gear. So clean it up really well. I can't stress that enough. Get all the little dirt and grime out of all these little cracks cracks and all around the edge and uh, get your dental picks out and clean out all these little holes. Get every little piece of grime and dirt you can get off of this. It's very important that you clean that up. You're going to need this cog, which is part of the uh, creeper gear, and basically it slips onto the existing shaft and you drive a roll pin down in it to keep it in place. Now there are also two alignment pins that would go into here and here, which I do not have for this tractor. I'm going to put mine together without them, but I don't recommend that. Now that we have the rear end taken care of, for the most part, we're going to deal with this cross member. It's basically just unbolt the two bolts on each side and slide this straight back. And we're going to have to get the drive shaft disconnected as well. After you've installed the new drive shaft and you have the appropriate cross member, you can start putting everything else back together. I do want to make mention that earlier in the video I talked about replacing this fork, but on this particular tractor being an early 154, I was able to use the original fork if it just fine. And um, also there was that extension uh, rod that had kind of the, the funny adapter on the end. I didn't even use that. All I did was pull off the longer threaded uh, linkage and I put on the shorter threaded linkage and everything fit just fine. There wasn't an issue with that. Uh, and then remember your clutch brake gets bolted to this funny bracket that bracket kind of looks like this because uh, if you remember uh, it was originally bolted to the back of the the rear end and once you put the creeper gear there there's really no place to put it so you know obviously the manufacturer came up with this bracket that's bolted like this and then you bolt your uh, brake to the top of that so it ends up looking like that so you can see, really, all you're doing is just kind of condensing everything. You're moving everything forward just enough to make up the space of the creeper gear. So at this point, you just pretty much put everything back together the way you took it apart. I usually leave the tunnel off so I can adjust the brake clutch, and then I put the tunnel back on and I give it a test drive. Hopefully this kind of gives you an idea of what it takes to put a creeper gear onto one of these Cub Low Boys. And if you like these types of videos, please like and subscribe. And by all means, take a look at some of my other videos. You might, at the very least, be entertained.